This video was sponsored by absolutely no one. That's right, you guys. This is an unsponsored, unplanned video that I just had to make. So recently while preparing for some other upcoming videos, I was reading this book, just minding my own business, when all of a sudden the author decides to say something that made me reread that part like four times and then go on a three hour long scavenger hunt throughout the internet, trying to intuitively understand what he had just said. In fact, while seeing this problem for the first time, I decided to just turn on the video camera so you guys could see my initial reaction to what I was reading. So here's that video. Hell no! Now, there is more I want to say in this intro, but instead I'm going to pin that in a comment down below so we can just get started. Imagine you meet a parent who says that they have two kids, at least one of which is a girl. The question is, what is the probability that the other is a girl? As in, we want to know the chance of this person having two daughters. By the way, this answer is kind of weird, but it's what's coming after that's really strange. For this question, most people should say, well, I know for this family, the children consist of either a boy and a girl or two girls, which is true since it cannot contain two boys. But many people might wrongly say that this means there's a 50% chance of there being two girls and a 50% chance of a mix. Thus, we have our answer to the question. This here is wrong. The real answer is one third or 33.3%, and that's because there are actually three equally likely outcomes. A boy who was born first and a daughter born second, the other way around where the daughter is older, and two girls. We want the probability that both are girls, which is one out of three. The key thing here is that when the parents said at least one of the kids is a girl, they did not specify which one. If that bothers you, just imagine a thousand families all with two kids. 250 of them will have two boys, since there's a 25% chance of that happening, just like flipping two heads in a row. 250 will also have two girls for the exact same reason. And this leaves 500 families that have a boy and a girl. In half of those, the boy will be the older sibling, and in the other half, the girl will be. We were told there's at least one girl in this family, so that throws away the two boys option, leaving 750 families, 250 of which have two girls. As in, of all the families with at least one girl, a third of them have two girls. Okay, that may be a little counterintuitive, but nothing crazy just yet. But what if now we mix things up just a little? What if we ask the same question with one little change? There's still a parent with two children, one of which is a girl, but now they add on whose name is Julie. Now what's the probability that this parent has two daughters? And is it different than the value we got earlier? It's literally the exact same question, except now I'm just telling you the name of the daughter. I mean, beforehand, we knew there was a girl. She, of course, has a name, and now I'm just telling you what it is. So it seems like this should have no effect, but it actually does. The new probability that there are two daughters in this family is 50% instead of 33.3%. That should be weird to you guys. Even after I saw the math, the intuition behind it still wasn't clear to me. But hopefully if you're having trouble seeing this, you'll kind of understand it after I show you this next part. Imagine 10,000 families all with two kids, where we will tell only families with a girl named Julie to step forward, aka our given. And by the way, I'm only making this value larger than before because it'll help with the numbers. Again, the split is 2,500 families will have two boys, 2,500 will have two girls, and 5,000 will have a boy and a girl. And let's say the name Julie is given to one in 100 girls, which is probably wrong, but it does not matter. So none of the two boy families step forward, of course. Of the families with one girl, on average, 50 of them will consist of a daughter named Julie, since that's one one hundredth of 5,000. Then there are 2,500 two-daughter families, which means there's 5,000 daughters in total here. So on average, 50 of those families will consist of a girl named Julie. Now, this is only assuming that no families named both their daughters Julie, which is definitely a fair assumption. So there are 100 total families with a daughter named Julie, which was, again, our given. And 50% of those families have two daughters, which is the very strange answer to our question. Another easy way to see this is remember how before, once we were told that one child is a girl, we had those three equally likely options since we didn't know who was born first? Well, now given one girl named Julie, there are four options. A girl named Julie and a boy. A boy and a girl named Julie. A girl not named Julie and a girl named Julie. And then the same thing, but the other way around. The only other two possible options are two boys and two girls named Julie, which both cannot happen since we know there's at least one girl, and we assume these parents aren't weird enough to give the same name twice. These four options are then equally likely, and two of them involve having two daughters, 
thus there's a 50% chance of that outcome. So if you meet a man at a bar who mentions that he has two kids, and you learn one of them is a girl, at that moment, with no more information, there is a 1 out of 3 chance that he has two daughters. But if he says, I have a girl named Julie, that surprisingly changes everything. You know what, let me say this in a different way, which isn't going to help make this more obvious, but it's still very interesting. Again, once the man says he has two children, at least one is a girl, you have those one out of three odds. But if he then points and says, there she is, and you look and see a girl who is his daughter, that probability now jumps to 50%, which is really weird. Like, we know this guy has a daughter, as in we know there's some girl out there, she exists, at least one who is this guy's child. So if she's then standing in front of us, nothing should change, right? We knew she existed, and now we can just see her. But her physical presence, just like having her name, changes everything. Because now you can see a girl who you know has a sibling. And that sibling is either a boy or a girl, each with a 50-50 chance of being true. So the chance that this family has two daughters is 50%. The other 50% is there being a boy and a girl. Okay, for anyone who's still confused, it's just gonna get worse from here. Cause this is the part of the video that confuses me the most. Remember before how being told the name of the daughter totally changes the probability? Well, did you also notice that the name itself really didn't matter? Whether it was Julie or Miranda or Holly or whatever, the probability would still change to 50-50. So keep that in mind for this next part. Let's say again we meet a stranger and they say they have two children, one of which is a girl, whose name is... And let's pause there. At this moment, there's a 33.3% chance that this person has two daughters. But they're about to say the name, and once they do, it becomes a 50% chance that they have two daughters, regardless of what the name is. So couldn't we just say that right now, before the name is even said, that the probability is 50%? Because she definitely has a name, and regardless of what it is, it's going to lead to that same outcome, the same probability. But that would mean the 33.3% we found earlier is wrong, which it isn't. So does that mean the 50% number is actually wrong? Also no, those are both correct. It has to do something with identifying the daughter, whether it be by a name or pointing and saying there she is, that changes the situation. So even though it doesn't matter what her name actually is, we still have to wait to hear it in order for the numbers to change. That doesn't feel correct. It honestly seems like there's something else going on. But of all the forums I read and all the blog posts I saw, it seems like this is the case. But for anyone who has additional information, please comment down below because I'm very curious to hear what you guys have to say. And you know what? Just because it's really weird, I'm going to include something else in this video. If instead of the name, the hypothetical parent tells you they have two children, at least one is a girl, who was born on a Tuesday, what is the chance they have two girls now? Okay, now any normal person should be saying, what does Tuesday have to do with this? Is that going to change the probability to 50% again? And no, it's not. The new probability is now 13 27 that this family has two daughters, with just being told that at least one of them was born on a Tuesday. The math here is a little trickier, but we can use the same analysis as when we were told that the name of the person was Julie. If we start with 196 two children families this time, you'll see why in a second, we can get our split. We ignore the left category as always. We take 1 7th of 98 as that's how many of those families on average will include a daughter born on a Tuesday. But for these 49 families, there are 98 girls total. One seventh of those are born on a Tuesday, which also gives us 14 girls. But that does not mean 14 families, because this time it's very possible there's overlap, where both girls in a family were born on a Tuesday, which would reduce this number. Whereas before, there was no chance both girls would have the same name. To figure out the overlap, imagine all 49 families lined up. And let's just look at one now. For this family, what is the chance that neither daughter is born on a Tuesday? Well, there's a 6 out of 7 chance of not being born on a Tuesday. Then you multiply that again, since we have to account for both girls. And that gets us 36 out of 49 times neither daughter is born on a Tuesday. That means of these 49 families, 36 will not have a girl born on a Tuesday, and thus 13 will. 
So the 14 girls we saw earlier actually goes to 13 families in total after accounting for the overlap. Thus, given some family with a daughter born on a Tuesday, 13 27 of the time, that family will consist of two daughters. I find that so crazy that you can be talking to someone, they mention they have two children, one's a girl, who was born on a Tuesday, and that actually changes things. In any social situation, if someone were to tell you that, it would mean absolutely nothing. You'd be like, okay, why did you even say that? But from a mathematical viewpoint, that actually was a big factor. If I'm trying to guess whether you have a son or another daughter, that seemingly unnecessary piece of information actually moved the probability about 15%. And before I end this, I can ask the same question that I did earlier. Since it doesn't matter the day of the week the person was born on, whether it's Tuesday or Friday, the probability still becomes 13 out of 27. Can't we just assume the probability is 13 27 before they say the day of the week? Like, I have at least one daughter who was born on a... They don't even need to complete the sentence. But if they don't complete the sentence, we saw the probability is 1 out of 3. So it's that same counterintuitive reasoning that I think is one of the most confusing things about this entire problem. Now, just about every form I went on for this video mentioned how strict the language needs to be to make sense of all of this. Like this was everywhere. So I know I probably made several statements that can be considered ambiguous, but I hope you guys mostly understood what I meant by all of this. The point of this video is actually not to explain all the math behind everything. And as you can see, I don't fully understand intuitively how this all works either, but I found it super interesting and I wanted to make a quick video about it. But now I gotta get back to the other video I was actually working on. So if you enjoyed, comment, share, subscribe, like, dislike, I don't care. My brain's dead. I don't even want to work anymore.